Um, I just thought I'd pop in and uh, answer a couple questions. I get these questions, these three questions, a lot. So I thought I would just answer them here. The three questions that I get a lot are, one, how to scale up and work larger, two, um, how to deal with procrastination, and three, uh, easy ways to start selling more work. So I will just start, uh, I'm just gonna start going over this, but really this is just a, an opportunity for, a, you know, if you have any questions, just pop them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them as I go along. So um, first of all, the first question, you know, how do you scale up? And, you know, that's, uh, there's, there's two pieces to this. There's the piece about physically doing it, and then there's the piece about psychologically doing it. So I'm gonna talk about those two little parts, you know. Hey, Lavina, nice to see you here. Um, so let's talk about the physical needs to paint larger. Um, so you need to be able to get back from your work. You know, uh, when we're working on small paintings, little things, we can sit at a table and we're, we can look down on them and see them from this great height. We can see all the surface, the whole area in one shot. We need to have that view always. So if you're in a bedroom and you're trying to work on a really large painting and you can't get back from it far enough it, and you're too close in, it, you're you're fighting that, so it's really important that you either have you know a door in that bedroom so you can like walk down the hall and then look back at your art so you can see it small. If you can see the large painting small, one, it's not that intimidating because it's this small thing, but it allows you to understand how strong and and uh, powerful you need to make those marks so you can. Um, you know, so you can make make your marks so it changes the the uh, changes the actual painting. Like the marks are making a difference. A lot of the challenges people have is that they get used to working on a certain size, but then they go and they work on a larger painting, and they're still approaching the mark making in the same way. It doesn't have the same resonance. It, it's not as it needs to be much stronger. If you have a small curvy brush mark. When you paint really large and you do the small curvy brush mark that would look really curvy and bold on a small painting, it isn't on a large picture. So you have to just scale up everything. So to be able to see if that's working or not, you have to be able to get back far enough from your work. That's really, really important. The other piece of this is, um, is that uh, working kind of at arm's length on a larger piece. So, you know, instead of, you know, you really have to be a, at a distance from this work. You've got to get far enough back from it in order to make the differences and make the changes on it. So holding that paintbrush a little further back, putting your arms straight, staying further away from the picture so you can kind of understand that what's happening on the whole panel. And because it's so big, it's hard to tell when you're working on one corner what's happening on the, how that's affecting the rest of the work. It's easy to work on a six inch painting, a six inch square painting, because you can see it all. Like we can all, like that's, that's where you would start if you're a beginner, work on small work, because you can see it. As it gets bigger, it gets harder to. So we need to get back from it. That's really, really important. Also, we need to use our whole arm. The gestures and the that are small and matter on a small picture that make a difference don't work so well when you paint. Uh, you know when you're painting bigger, so you have to really step into it. It's like you're using your whole body to move things around. You really have to just get comfortable with that. It becomes like a physical dance. You know, like it's not just moving your wrist. It's moving your whole arm. We got to get that energy and, and it's a bigger picture and it takes more energy. The marks have to be more energetic to show up on that bigger stage. Okay, so 
which so having the space to do this super important your tools have to be bigger they have to scale up you need bigger tools you need bigger brushes more paint you know don't think that that small brush that you're used to using on a 12 inch painting is going to work so well and it'll work a little bit but we want to have that really big range on the on the work on the large paintings we want to feel that and we need a three inch brush we need to use you know a scraper tool we want to really you know paper towels that are a 20 12 inch roll so you can squeeze the paint across having that range of marks makes the work exciting i mean the same rules apply on a small picture as it does on a large one hey susan nice to see you here um Okay, so like I'm looking behind me at this painting, this is a piece of a large painting, and I'm still working on it, but you can see the variety of marks. There's, a, you know, this purple line up here, uh, you know, that's really thin. And then uh, over here, this is a little fatter, this red mark here. And then we've got really thicker areas and bigger marks and smaller, all that range we want to have in there. That's what makes the work exciting to look at. Now, so psychologically, we can't be intimidated because the paintings got bigger. You, what you want to do is go up in stages. Don't go from a really small picture to a gigantic one. Just take it in steps so you're confident. So you're so you have um, you know you have some ease with this. You know that makes a big difference. Hey, Marka, Carla, nice to see you. Um, so so that's that's really important, right? Like. Being comfortable, if you're not comfortable, the work will get kind of uptight. But what I recommend is definitely, you know, work larger, get those bigger tools, really experiment for a while so you're comfortable. The most important thing is that, that you can make those marks freely and you're comfortable. Because a painting that's large when you're holding back is almost worse <laughs> than a small picture when you're holding back, you know? So anyway, for you guys that are just joining, I've, um, I'm just answering a couple questions and I'm open to some question. Uh, well, Dolores has already has one, so I'll answer that, but I'm just here to answer some questions, but I'm going over three questions. Uh, one about scaling up, which I just kind of talked about two about procrastination and three, just some easy ways to sell more art. Um, these are some questions that I just been getting a ton. The same questions keep coming up. So I'm just answering them here, but also know that, if you have some questions, I'm happy to hit hit them um, while I'm on here. So Dolores is asking, is that an oil uh, or with mixed media? So this is an oil painting behind me. Those marks are the drawing marks, those red ones um, up here, uh, right up there. That's oil pastel, um, big oil, oil sticks, I'm sorry, oil sticks. sticks. There's crayon, there's charcoal, um, oil paint, uh, so yeah, just all mixed. It's all oil based. Um, so it all kind of holds together, but it's still a little wet cause I just moved it behind me and I got it on my hand. Okay. Hi, Judy. Nice to see you. Tammy. Hi. Um, okay. So, so those are some things about the, about scaling up, do it in stages, get those bigger tools, make sure you have them a lot of room to get back. You, you don't have to have your whole giant studio, but you just need a hallway that you can walk down so you can make that picture look really, really small from a distance. Take it outside so you can see it because if it's strong and it's working at like, you know, a, a, a thumbnail size, it, it, it is strong, right? It, it, but you'll see that can be really, really helpful. Another trick you can use is just take a picture of it put it on your phone and make the picture really, really small. So you can you can see if this has got any power. It should be strong as, as a small little, you know, half inch by half inch picture. Okay, um, Marion saying, uh, do you varnish your paintings? Yeah, I do varnish it. I use a liquid, I wipe it on there. Uh, I use a paper towel and I just kind of, or sometimes a brush, but I put a pretty good coat on it. it takes a day or so to dry. And then I use um, cold wax on it and I rub it on there and get it, um, I let that dry and then I kind of polish it. So it's not really shiny. It's got a little bit of, um, it's kind of um, like a satin finish to it. 
But since I'm still working on this, it doesn't have um, it doesn't have any varnish on it right now. I don't really bother with that until the end, you know. Um, okay, cool. So yeah, any questions you guys have? Hey, Barbara, Diane. Um, oh, so uh, oh, so she's asking, can someone teach us how to make Pinterest pins in the 2002 CVP business module, a la Jennifer Allwood? Yeah, that that's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm realizing Pinterest, you know, I hear um, from a lot of people find me through Pinterest and I'm not, I put stuff on there, but other people share things. And I think it's a really great place for people to find your work. So uh, I'm really interested in that as well. You know, Barbara, good to see you all the way from Australia and Darlene. A lot of folks, you know, it's interesting. Australia is just a really creative place. We, I was looking at the people who have enrolled in programs and stuff. And we have a giant chunk of people from Australia. It's kind of great. Um, you know, it's, you would think it'd be, it wouldn't, but, it, but I guess that's just, uh, there's just a lot of people there that are making art and maybe, I don't know, maybe there's not as much teaching there uh, or something um, because the appetite for learning stuff is really big, which is awesome. Um, so Christy's saying, I'm keeping my smaller brushes out of reach while I paint my biggest canvases this week. It helps. Yeah, because it feels safer to, to, you know, to use those brushes that we're used to, but they really don't work when you start getting bigger. Now, you can, you know, on this painting behind me, I've got small marks, you know, I have, these are pretty small marks and they're made with a small pastel or a crayon, but it isn't, I'm not, those aren't really, those are just like subtleties. They're not really going to make a difference in, in the painting. So, um, and Marion, this doesn't smear the charcoal. Um, I use a spray fixative a little bit sometimes, or I'll pre, I'll just coat just those areas. So just so it sets it up. And often I'm painting, I'm doing the charcoal into wet paint. So then it, um, it kind of fixes the charcoal. So I, I don't really have that problem. Um, Simone, hi from Australia too. Uh, great, nice to see you. Um, uh, you guys have probably heard, you know, we're starting our free workshop April 14th, coming up Valentine's Day. If any of you haven't joined, and this is gonna be an amazing week, um, I've got a whole whole week of teaching starting on Valentine's Day. So if you go to the, um, go to uh, A2L, a2lworkshop.com, you can sign up for that. Um, Ferris will probably put in the, a link to that in here. Okay, so um, let's talk a little bit about procrastination because this is this is a challenge, uh, challenging topic. Uh, here's the deal with the procrastination, and it's it's there's this thing about art making that I've noticed where the more you do, like what, the more you make art, the more you tend to make art, <laughs> and the less you do the less you do. And it just, it's like this vicious cycle and it's such a bummer that it's this way. But here's here is what you need to kind of do is you've got to, to like break this. And, and I do this now, I do this with, with working out. I do this with a whole bunch of things because I'm, I'm a pretty like perfectionist. Like I won't go for a run unless I have an hour, but sometimes I'm so busy. And so I'll blow it off because I don't have enough time or I won't make my work because, oh, I just don't have enough time. But here's what you wanna start doing is really establishing a pattern of the way you work, kind of your habits of, you know, you're gonna paint on Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, and Friday comes around and you don't ha barely have any time. Don't resist doing that. Just go in for that 20 minutes. Do, do like, so you've checked the box that you've painted this thing because you know, and even if you have 20 minutes, again, you know, and I, I taught a lot about this, how little and often is, is a superior way to learn than just having 12 hours and working straight. You really can improve just with a little bit of time, multiple times. What happens, what we see is when we, when we participate in our practice, even for 20 minutes, we notice that you tend to come back because what happens is when we're not working, the story, the movie of our, of our life that we're participating in, the, the problem of not painting is much bigger, feels worse than the actual process of doing it. But once we go in for 20 minutes, we remember, 
oh yeah, this is just so easy. God, I, I don't have much time today, but I, why did I wait the other day so long? This is so easy. This is so fun. That, that affirmation comes when you're, when you're making the work. It doesn't come thinking about it. It doesn't come really looking at other people's work. You get the less you do, the less you do, because it just feels harder and harder and you get more and more detached from it and disconnected. So you that 10 minutes, if you have 15 minutes, you have 20 minutes to go do something, then you're you're reprogramming and you're you're checking the box. You're just checking the box. Yeah, I, I didn't have any time today, but I grabbed 20 minutes. I did this cool thing, or I just I, all I did is I rearranged my brushes. That counts huge. So if if you, you know, avoiding procrastination is just about coming into your practice just for like 20 minutes. That's what can break it. And you know what will happen. You come for 20, but you'll stay for an hour because it's really fun once you kind of get going in it. It's never as bad as we think it is. You know, the actual art making pro that's not stressful. Art making isn't a stressful thing. I mean, yes, it's struggle when it's not working well, but it's pretty engaging. I'm always amazed at these workshops I teach because we paint for three hours in the morning and then we paint for three hours at night, but it, people paint so much longer and they're not doing it because it's just really engaging. It's really, really fun because they've gotten into a rhythm and they just stick it out. They just want to do it. Like they'll have dinner and they'll just keep, they have to come up after dinner and just work for t six hours because it's actually really interesting and enjoyable to do it. Thinking about doing it isn't, and that's where we got to be careful. Don't worry about it so much. Just know that you'll go in for 20 minutes and the rest will kind of take care of itself. It's really that easy. Um, so Dolores is asking, how do you know your own style? Just begin painting, just begin paint, putting paint on. Well, a little bit, Dolores, and, and I talk a lot about this, um, you know, in uh, the Creative Visionary Program, which the season of that's coming up pretty soon, the free Art to Life workshop is gonna be leading into that, and we're gonna be starting that program. I talk a lot about this, and we spend the first three weeks of that program talking and getting clear about what it is that lights you up. You know, what are the things in your life? What makes you feel excited? What makes you, what parts of your art do you like? What parts of other people's art do you like? So style actually is just the stuff that you that you really like. And it's different for everyone because what I like is gonna be different than what you like. But if we have to start paying attention to that. And we can pay attention by having a sketchbook, by doing a series of pictures. This is why I, I teach people how to make their art and we do it in a process of a series because you can learn so much when you have four or five paintings you're working on kind of at the same time because one will get better and you can start saying, wow, I love the one on the left, but the three on the right, I don't like so much. What's the difference? Why do I like, why does Nick, like the first one more than the other ones. And you can sit there and you have something to figure it out with and you can write it down. It's like, I love these, I love saturated color. Like I don't right now in my art practice, I don't really wanna do dull color like these other ones. I feel a, an energy when I look at the first one. So guess what? Now I'm gonna take those that color and I'm gonna bring it into those dull paintings and bring up the color. So do you get it? So you're finding that's that's your style. That's like you. It, that's how you do it. That's how you figure it out. And your style is just you and you're, you are going to be changing. So it's not like you're going to you're going to be the person who paints colorful paintings. You might do that for a while. And then it's going to change. You're going to evolve and mature and you're going to get more sensitive as you do this. And that's why your style um, changes. It's it isn't something that drops out of the air and suddenly you have a style. We think it is because we look at successful artists and we look at their gallery shows and all the work's consistent. All that is is someone taking a patch of time, they've been paying attention to what they feel excited about and they're just mining that one little area just for a while, for that one show. They're just gonna do 15 paintings in this juicy kind of atmosphere that they've discovered that they like. 
And I assure you, next year's show they do won't be the same. It can't be. You move through it. So it's actually kind of great because this style thing, when it could have been one of my questions because it comes up a lot, uh, especially with people just kind of starting to figure this out. But it's a freebie. You know, once you're shown how to do your work in a way that is contingent on how you are and you make that connection, you get the style part anyway. It's like, it's like how you laugh. You laugh a certain way. You can't really, it's no, it's not, it's just your style of how you laugh. It comes with your operating system. You already have all the discernment you need. You already know the little things that you like about art, the things you like about wild flowers and things in nature, all that stuff. You, you've spent your whole life getting clear on that. We need to start paying attention to that and bringing it in to the art practice. And that's what we do in the Creative Visionary Program. That's, that's why we get the results we get is because we spend that time doing it. And it's, it's not so much that you spend that time and then you're done. We teach people to spend that time and do it over and over again because I change. I know you guys do. We change as we're as we're evolving. You know what I liked yesterday is it's going to be a little different um, three three months from now. So cool. So I hope I hope that helps. Um, and I you know what I love it because I love it when things are like oh it's so obvious because it really is obvious this st style thing like it's. We don't have to really do anything special for this one, you know, and we can all find our style and we can all do amazing work and it's all available. It's kind of great. You know, you just have to be interested in doing it. You go, you know, you have to persevere and try things and, you know, you might like playing chess more and that'll take over and you'll do that. But if you're interested, uh, this is all possible for all of us. And, um, and so I just love it because I see that over and over again. All right, so that was just some like my little rant on uh, procrastination. Um, I, you know, now I'm going to touch upon. Um, I'm going to touch upon. Hey, Francine, I'm going to touch upon um, selling more work and a couple. You know, and it's selling more work. It's like how to get your work out there more and how to get that going a little bit. And so I'm just going to talk about a couple things. But they're the big things, the big things. So I'm really interested in showing, teaching people the few things that really make a big difference, not a bunch of the little things, because there's lots of small kind of tricks and tips and all that. You can get so buried in that. And it can be such a drag because you're an artist and you want to make your work. But you have this other thing that you want to sell your work to because you're like me, it piles up. And, you know, so what are a couple of the big things we got to make sure we're doing? So the big thing that the, really the biggest thing is that we want to start collecting our the, the, the people who love our work. We want to collect those people and we collect them in the form of emails and we want to have a list of the people that have liked our work and we want to stay in touch with them. And it's just not that hard to do. And it's really, really powerful. So, you know, we all have probably a hundred people, if you include your parents or you know your kids or their friends, or you know, there's there's a, a group of people out there that know of your work, that that are excited about it. If they if you had a little art party, they would come. They might buy some of your things. There's a, a for some of us, it's just a hundred people, and that's a great great start. It might be fifty people, but that's a really really good start. You want to get their emails, and you want to be thinking about talking to them every single month or at least every six weeks. Talking about them just means sending them an email with a picture of what you're working on and, and a continuation of the story of what you're doing. For those of you who are starting out, you have such an advantage because your work is going to change so much and so quickly. And there's so much bravery in what you're doing. And the people that have seen you, maybe who knew you before you were making art and they see you doing this, they get really excited and they give you a lot of positive feedback. So the people that are starting kind of have a bit of a you know promotional advantage here. 
The story that we share with what we're doing truthfully with our work to these people that are kind of interested um, goes so far uh, as to it, basically it's, it's creating a connection with the outside world. And once you have a connection with 50 people, you can then invite them to something. You can share when things get hard and they'll give you feedback. You, you, you're actually in a conversation with them and it's so powerful and people love it. And so you continually share the conversation of what you're struggling with, especially if you're starting out and you're, you know, when, when people see that you're struggling and then three months go by and then you share something. It's like, I, this is the best painting I think I've ever done. I just am so excited. This is what I, this is the one good thing I did last month. I just want to share it to you. I'm, you know, I'll be having an open studios in the summer. I'm going to try and get six more like this. Thanks for your interest. And by the way, if you know anyone who is, would like my work, um, please share it with them because I'm trying to reach more people with my work. I'm so excited about this. Like that's so interesting and so engaging. We want people to feel a part of our journey. And we wanna think about our journey that way. It's not just for you to be doing your journey. It's for, it's like, it's inspiring for other people to feel that you're going after something that matters to you. Putting things out in the world that matters is a gigantic, bold move. And, and most people won't do it. Most people aren't going to do that. So when you do this and you do it in the form of your art and you talk about your work, it is very powerful. And, and things happen as a result of it. People email you back, people show up, people buy paintings. And I know a lot of you do this already, but for those of you who don't, if you get a hundred people and it won't take that long, that 100 people turns to 500. It doesn't take that, you know, in a year you can have 500 people easily. When you get 1,000, and it's exponential, right? So 500 people, then 1,000 people, because they tell friends, so you're getting the rate, it it's picks up velocity. It's like Instagram. And so you get more people. If you get 2,000 people, which is not hard, that's like a couple years with not even trying. That's just sending... 24 emails out. If you get 2,000 people that, that are interested in your work and they're engaged with you, they will come to a show. They will buy your work. They will take a workshop from you. You know, it's, it's really, really powerful and it doesn't cost really anything. You know, I think MailChimp gives you the first thousand people or 2,000 people for free. So this is, this is a giant thing and never you know, underestimate the power of the people that are showing up for you. My email list is the most valuable thing I have because many of you are on it and it means the world to me. You guys allow me to do this stuff and to, to paint. Like it's, it's everything for me. This is, I am so clear on why I get to do what I get to do. And it's the people that collect my work and who come to workshops, who listen to me and then give me feedback and I'm learning with people. So it's, you know, when people feel that you value them, um, they show up and they stay connected. So that's of all the things you can do is get that group going and then just keep making your work. Like, you know, uh, another one is doing kind of the same story on Instagram. I swear, Instagram's so easy, so fast. If you don't have an account on Instagram, I suggest doing it. You can do it from your phone. What I like to do is I build it into my practice. So it's not a burden at all. I was like, when I'm painting, I just take a picture at the end. And most of the time my paintings aren't finished. I don't even like them half the time, but I force myself just to take a picture and share what I'm doing and say what I'm, the struggle I have or whatever. And people love it. I just do that once a day, once a day. And you get so many people that start following your work. So those two things, um, you know, plus taking a photograph of your work when you're working on it and posting it in Instagram, then looking at, at Instagram gives you what I love. Most important thing in the world <clears throat> is objectivity. You get to see your work in a new way. You see it in a small format. It's on your phone. People will respond to it. 
The sooner you can get your practice into a dialogue kind of, you know, conversation a little bit with the outside world, it can give you a lot of information. It can give you a lot of momentum. And I'm not saying you're making paintings for other people. You're doing it primarily for yourself, but you're gaining momentum because you're being generous with what you're doing. It, 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 it develops a, a, a really good side of ourselves that where we're not just thinking, oh, this is just my studio and I'm in here by myself. It's like, wow, this, this is great. I want to tell, this happened today on Wednesday. I can't wait to tell those 50 people who are interested in what I'm doing about what happened today. I'm going to write a note in my sketchbook to share this picture in my next email. And just take a photograph of that, write a bunch of, you know, write a short, you know, four or five sentences and just send it out. You'd just be amazed what, what comes in. So cool. Um, so Carolyn's saying, does it work to have a newsletter as blog format once a month? Then you can have feedback. Absolutely. Same thing. I mean, I started my uh, vlog, you know, just standing in front of paintings and uh, I would just, sh just shoot videos, uh, very informal. And uh, I get, I, I learn so much now. I love it because I, people give me all this feedback and we have kind of this really cool conversation on Sunday. Um, so absolutely, that's a great way to do it. Um, great, good, I'm glad, glad that relates. Um, so Paula is saying, that's what surprised me the most when I started painting my style is completely different to what I expected. Yeah, like you kind of can't, you can't game this, you know? I mean, you can, you can look out there in the world and say, I kind of want to be like David Hockney and here I got some of his paintings in my studio and I'm kind of, if David Hockney was going to paint, you know, a still life, he'd kind of, and I'm going to paint this still life. I'm going to kind of make it like his, like you can do that, but it is exhausting <laughs> and you'll never paint like David Hockney. You know, it's, it's like that thing of, you know, the only people that should wear a Greek fisherman's hat is a Greek fisherman, right? Like, He's already got that. That's hats his. We look stupid, kind of wearing a Greek fisherman's hat, you know. But you've got your hat that you you need to wear, and it's so much better to just be dancing to your own thing. But sure, look at Picasso. Use identify what the parts are in other people's work that you love. You're not going to love all of it, but be discerning about the pieces you take. Don't just say, "Oh, I love David Hockney. I'm going to copy it." I love how David Hockney uses flat color next to realistic imagery. I'm going to take that idea and apply it to my work. Do you get it? It's 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 the it's the same but different. And it, and it really it's what all artists do. We're all iterating. We're all in this conversation. Everyone's riffing off of everybody else. So it's pretty cool. Um, hey, Lynn, nice to see you here. Yeah, so uh, for those of you guys, I'm just saying it again. I'm, I'm over saying it. I'm sure we're starting on Valentine's Day, the Free Art to Life workshop. Uh, if you uh, go to a2lworkshop.com, you can sign up for it. Um, this is going to be a huge year this year. We're, we've got some uh, download. Uh, you know, we're going to do, we've got these workbook pages we're going to be handing out that you'll be able to get to kind of go through the, um, the three lessons together. And it's gonna, I think it's gonna be really hell. I did these and I was like, wow, I can't believe I never had these before for people. Cause I think it's gonna be really, really helpful. Um, and I'm doing some additional uh, Facebook live trainings in the free Art to Live Facebook group. So uh, make sure you join in that. I'm gonna make sure Ferris um, puts a link in there uh, in, the, in the chat for that. So, um, but if you just go to a2lworkshop.com uh, you know, once you sign up, we'll send you a link to join that. So a lot of, um, we've got a lot of people in there right now. It's really cool because we've been advertising and it, there's a lot of energy. Um, it's so, so cool. Anyway, um, okay, yeah, so those were the three things uh, I wanted to just hit. Uh, again, this was um, kind of a Q&A. Uh, if you guys have any questions, I'm happy to, to answer them. Uh, Gail saying you have helped, uh, you've, you have so helped me in my journey as a painter and the journey of finding my own particular direction. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I'm, I'm so, that feels great. I, I appreciate you saying that, Gail. And I, I love that it's, it's such a confusing thing. It was so hard for me and it was just such a drag and it doesn't have to be. And, and, you know, it's just that like, oh God, I get it. Like, 
I actually knew all along <laughs> what I was doing. You know, we get so we get so intimidated by what's going on out there, and certainly when we're beginning, you know, everyone looks so talented and there's such amazing work. And but it all comes back to just you know accessing the inner part of yourself. You know, what intuitively feels good to you. Your soul knows already. It already knows. And sure, you're going to have to learn to, you know, learn to use a paintbrush and you're going to need some color theory. And this is a lot of what I teach are just principles. You know, you need a bunch of information to make art. And it's it's not a huge amount. It's a chunk, you know, but you can figure it out. And in the Creative Visionary program, you get all of it and then some. And so, but it takes, you know, it's three solid months and and then and then some, you know, because it's it's a it's a thing. But it's not um, it's not impossible to get. But really, the good stuff is using these tools to then bring out what it is that you want to say, what feels good for you, um, and that's uh, just really a great process. So that's cool. I'm I'm glad that this is helping uh, you do that, Gail. That's great. Um, yeah, Susan's saying it's like your signature or handwriting. It's your own and hard to change. Yeah, and and it is cool. It does change, though. You know, it does change. But um, you, we've all got this, and you'll know when you, you know. And sometimes we have to work in a direction for a while that doesn't feel right. And I see this at a workshop. Someone will be sitting there for a couple days. And they're not really having a fun time, you know. And then eventually they, it clicks and they're like, you know, they raise their hand and they're like, I'm listen, I really don't want to do this kind of thing anymore. I hate it. I don't want to do what you're doing. I don't like how you do it. I'm like, great. How do you love to do it? Do it the way you feel right doing it. You know, and once they get permission, they get going, you know. So it's a really good cue. If, if it really sucks for you when you're working and it's just not good, try something else. Don't stay too long in an energy zapping, sucking time. You should be feeling kind of excited about what you're doing. I mean, obviously not all the time we go through hard patches, but if it's just feeling like you're, you know, walking through the desert on your knees, abandon that. Do something that's easier. Do something that's cleaner, more spacious. Do something that feels like how you want to feel in your best possible mind state physically. Have that be where you're shooting. How does that feel? How can you make work that feels like that? How can I be making work while I'm feeling like that? How can me making the work makes me feel like that? What colors am I using? Am I being really loose? Am I painting bigger? You know, all of that, we just want to kind of, we're, we're not trying to game this by having a, a, a real specific result. We're trying to get in touch with how we want to feel and then double downing on that and, and staying on that and tracking that and doing more and more like that. Um, because that's, that's what leads you the quickest the reason I'm talking about this is because I, what I try and do is I try and move people as fast as I can for them so they get through the hard learning stage and they're into a more of an integration flow stage. There's different, there's different um, chapters, there's different stages in the creative path. And the learning stage, it's important but it's also kind of hard. It's a hard road. So we wanna, you wanna work sensibly through that so we can get you going and you've got all the resources and all the tools and you can start being more expressive and being more like you and start integrating this stuff um, as, you know, so it doesn't take years and you can, you can do it pretty quickly. So, cool. Okay, oh, a few more comments here. Um, Gabby saying, you read and spoke my mind. I was just thinking about how I'm going to step up against all the most amazing artwork I have seen. Uh, talk about no confidence. Yeah, so Gabby, it's just, um, you know, this, that confidence thing is just practice. It's just not that you practice to make great work, it's practice showing up and reframing it, like know that there's no Gabby in the world that could ever make your work. You're the only one <laughs> who's gonna get to do this. And if you don't do it, no, it won't exist. So you you are charged with this you're the hero of this story and you just have to persevere for the work's sake and watch how it develops track your progress you know you can really move this along 
um, and gain the momentum. The momentum comes from your own work. It's your, you're an artist and that's how you, being an artist means that you, you get to self propel. We have to create systems for ourselves, and this is so important, and this is a huge piece of what I like to teach people. We've got to be self-generating. You know, if you're if you're working for a company, you rely on your boss to tell you you're good, getting a good job, well, you get a raise. There's all these external things that happen to you in the normal world, and that that we rely on those and we expect those, and there's systems set up so we can get that feedback. But sometimes in art making, we have to generate our own. And yeah, we're gonna get rejections, we won't get a show and everything, but we have to double down on the practice of our art. So the practice of our art becomes in and of itself the cool thing that we get to double down on and like, that's what we hold. That's the value of what we're creating. You're developing, yes, you're making your work, but you're building an art practice that's bulletproof, that can keep going. Even when no one likes what you're doing, you're still engaged. Because if you're still engaged, you show up and then the work gets better and it changes. And it, so that's what we're creating. I would much rather have someone get a really strong art practice. The work's gonna get good no matter what. If you have that practice, the practice has to be there. I hope that makes sense. It's kind of a different way of thinking about it. We evaluate our work based on like, oh, that I'm good, there's my great painting I made. But if the, if the practice is uneven, it's really, um, it's challenging. There's no foundation there. We're, we're just get riding like, oh, I made a great painting, I'm, I'm the best, and you feel so excited. And then you make a terrible painting and you feel so depressed. We don't wanna have that. We want it to be more even so we keep showing up and we have that, that momentum to to move us along, you know. Um, okay, um, Deborah saying doing your own thing is hard. You need to pay attention to what really lights you up. Thanks to CVP, I'm starting to make headway with that. It's great. It's really great. And uh, again, it's available. It's available for all of us, and it takes time, you know. And it's providing you're moving. You know the way Deborah says this. She, you know, she's starting to make headway with that, and that's great, right? You just need to be starting moving towards. That's how I frame it. I'm moving towards the things that are better. I'm not there yet, but I'm moving towards them. My work, I'm moving it towards like amazing work. And I'm just, it's all a process. 99% of what we do is this moving towards part. So we got to get good at doing it in terms of enjoying ourselves and making it so it's not, so it's, you know, a buoyant thing to participate in. So you're getting to go to the studio becomes the best part of your day because you get to be you without any restrictions, reframe your practice like that. So then you go all the time, right? Like that's that's such a cool way to think about it. Not, oh God, what am I gonna create? I get to go for half an hour and I get to just be so experimental and try things, play with color. No one's telling me what to do. Like this, that, that is the best thing. Make that the best valuable thing you have. It's not about selling work. It's not about making crappy paintings. It's about that art practice because all that other stuff, all the good stuff comes out of that. So we just really want to reframe it, stay buoyant in it and be able to go into it. Even if it's 20 minutes every other day, that's enough. That's enough. Don't ever think that if you just have 20 minutes, you can't have an art scene going start, move towards it. You know, you're not working all the time. Maybe you're not a full-time artist. Maybe you're not even a part-time artist. Maybe you only have a couple hours, but you're moving the ball down the field and you're getting, you're improving. And that is what creates the momentum. So, cool. Um, uh, so, so Lorraine's an interesting question. Do you think certain states of America respond to abstract more than others? Um, so, uh, or is it advantageous to move? So no, not, I don't think it is. Uh, I think it's important to, um, that email list is virtual. Like, like we get to reach out to people all over the world. So no, live where you want to live. Um, you know, wherever that is, providing it's inspiring for you and it can feed your work and make what you're working on be about where you live. You know, it can affect what you're doing, but share that too, you know. Um, I, I don't really 
you know, have a lot of people coming to my studio so much. I am in a metropolitan area in the Bay Area, but it's all email. People find out about it. People buy work online. It doesn't matter where, where you live, um, which is great, right? It's so cool. Um, hey, Nancy, nice to see you. Um, all right, you guys, I'm going to hop off here. Um, it's really nice to uh, see everyone, and it's just uh, really great to connect with you. Uh, again, we're starting the free Art to Life workshop. If you haven't signed up, a2lworkshop.com. Valentine's Day, Friday, not this Friday, but next Friday. And I still got a lot of work to do to get ready for this. Um, we'll be doing some Facebook Live trainings in addition to the free workshop this year during that week. And um, so it's going to be really fun. I hope to see you. You guys there and uh, we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be moving the ball down the field big time and I, I hope you guys can all come all right thanks you guys I will uh, I will be in touch appreciate it okay bye and go ahead and leave some questions here if you want I'll, I'll probably circle back around and answer them later okay bye